The program is still this morning on ITV. It's time now to go straight into our first discussion segment. As usual, every Monday morning, we start with the aviation uh, uh, discussion segment. And here, we will look at clear air turbulence. And to do this is a man you all know who is well grounded when it comes to the issue of aviation uh, program, aviation event, aviation uh, news, aviation technology, anything that has to do with aviation, uh, Mr. Godwin Ike. A very good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Joe. You're welcome. How was your weekend? Well, Beautiful and yours? Oh, wonderful, wonderful as always. Yeah. We thank God for this his This morning message. we shall be mm -hmm. having... My dear viewers, please welcome mm -hmm. to the program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, clear air turbulence. turbulence. Yeah. <laughs> what is there to know about <laughs> clear air right. turbulence? J uh, I know just like other people who, who want to ask, is there anything like on clear air turbulence? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, well, Joe, uh, you, you've flown several here. Mm -hmm. At, at least within uh, mm. within the country, mm. locally, uh, very well. Mm. Um, have you noticed sometime in flight, especially in morning flights when you're approaching Lagos, and then an airplane that was moving smoothly and nicely and heading out to Lagos suddenly, out of the blues, without any sign and signal, you see something like this. Have you ever noticed it? Mm. Well, the one I noticed is not up to that description. That's correct. But, but just, just but mild, just mild. Very well. Mm. I've, personally, I've experienced a horrible one very close to Lagos, uh, you know, traveling from Abuja to... It's turbulence that causes such, um, you know, such chaotic and uh, violent uh, movement of, of uh, the aircraft in the air. And that's what we're going to be seeing today. It's an awesome uh, subject to deal with. Excuse me. And uh, what's more, it's highly technical and dry. But I have done everything that I, uh, that I can to soften it a little bit and, uh, and wet it up a little bit so that my viewers out there will understand the issues. Mm. And by the way, it was a member of uh, my aviation club forum, mm. one pastor in a blessing that made a special request for this particular subject to be dealt with today. Mm. I hope he's watching and I hope he's looking out for it. Yeah, of course. So let's quickly mm. uh, uh, get down to business. Yes, and, and, uh, Yes, and deal with mm. turbulence. Um, can we have clip one, please, so that we just you know, get on with this business? Here you go, Joe. Definition of turbulence. It says that turbulence, otherwise known as turbulent flow, is a flow regime in fluid dynamics characterized by chaotic changes in pressure and flow velocity. The flip side of it is laminar flow regime, which occurs when a fluid flows in parallel layers with no disruption between the layers. That is the flip side of uh, in a turbulence. You, you can call that um, you know, laminar flow. Turbulence is generated when excessive kinetic energy is injected into parts of fluid flow, which overcomes the uh, damping effect of the fluid viscosity. You know, when we talk about viscosity, you know what we mean? You know, uh, the thickness of, um, uh, of the fluid in question. Well, you're going to see and understand yeah, but, more. But this, Take a look the, at that but, photograph. But this particular one, uh, when excessive kinetic energy is injected That's into right. part of the fluid yeah. uh, flow, yeah, first of all, you ask yourself what kinetic energies, uh, energy you know, that is generated by you know, movement. Simply, that's the simplest definition you can give to kinetic energy. And so, um, as we go on, you notice that what actually causes turbulence is when you know, winds of different speed. So you can see movement goes on in, in that flow. All right? Now, when you say free flow, it's the same as air flow. This 
the principle that you, you observe you know, in water, it's actually the same, you know, basically the principle that you observe in, in, in air. You know, so um, uh, when winds of you know, different speeds meet, they become chaotic and create ridges. And that's when you you have turbulence in there. So let's just that move on. That's yeah, it, that's clear to you, isn't it? So that's why you know we say kinetic uh, energy, you know, injected in the system by movement. You know, that sort of thing. So uh, clip two, please. Yeah, here we go. Now Reynolds number, very important for uh, uh, my viewers to understand this. Although very elusive in nature, turbulence can be predicted by a dimensionless uh, constant called the Reynolds number. Introduced by George Gebre Stokes in 1851, Reynolds numbers was in 1908 named by Arnold Summerfield after Osborne Reynolds, who popularized its use in 1983. I mean, sorry, not, not 1983, 1883, I'm so sorry, 1883. The Reynolds number is used to predict the transition from lamina. Remember, we talked about lamina when everywhere is uh, sane and, and smooth. Now, transition from lamina to turbulent flow. And that, uh, I'm going to show you something very quickly in clip one. When I finish reading this, so they will we'll quickly go there. Um, and used in the scaling of similar but different sized flow situations such as between an aircraft model in a, in a wind tunnel and the full size version. Now you know in order to know how uh, aircraft behave in the air there's a wind tunnel that manufacturers and designers use to run a little model such as this one we have in, this, in, the, in the studio and see how they behave with different flat positions and different aileron positions and different rudder positions. That's how manufacturers and researchers study about airplanes and develop awesome machines such as the F-35 um, warjet uh, that Americans build today. They say it's, it's the most dangerous in the world today. Mm. So, so um, let me show my viewers something in clip one very quickly. Can you take me back to clip one very quickly? And, and, and we'll see something. Uh, uh -huh. do, do take a look at that photograph. It's a candlestick, you know, uh, burning right there in the air. Mm -hmm. Can you see the smooth smoke? Of course. Coming out, and at a particular point, mm -hmm. it becomes chaotic and rough. You see that? So that smooth part of it is known as the laminar position. And it's the, normal. The, the, yes, the other one where you, it becomes chaotic is the turbulent. Uh, a point of it. So the, uh, the Reynolds number is talking uh, about a different direction. Very well. So the, the you know the Reynolds number helps you to determine that point at which it, it, it transits from lamina to turbulent. It, it can you, you see the edge when it suddenly becomes uh, chaotic and, and, and turbulent. So that's the, the transition from lamina to turbulence that uh, the Reynolds number allows you to determine. Because in, in real uh, world, you don't even see these things in the air, but they are there. OK, clip three, please. Let's go to clip three very quickly, very quickly. Clip three, uh, clear air turbulence. Clear air turbulence, usually known as CAT, C-A-T. And from here on, viewers, Anytime you hear cart, as we move on, we don't clear air turbulence all the time. Just know that cart means clear air turbulence. All right? Is the turbulent movement of air masses unnoticeable through visual clues, such as clouds? It is caused when bodies of air moving at widely different speeds meet. Did you hear that? It is the type of turbulence airplanes experience in the air. Cut mostly occurs in the high uh, troposphere at altitudes of about 7,000 to 12,000 meters. That's, that's equivalent of uh, 23,000 to 39,000 feet above sea level, okay? As it meets the tropopause. 
Now you don't let this uh, big, uh, uh, you know, atmospheric layers, you know, uh, uh, confuse or, or get you wondering what what are they talking about, troposphere, and then uh, talking about uh, 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 tropopause. Now let me remind you something I have taught you in the past, Joe. But uh, I'll read through to the end and I'll remind you something. Um, Cat is usually encountered in the region of jet streams at lower altitudes. It can be encountered near mountain ranges. Although cat causes discomfort to air travelers, it scarcely, scarcely leads to loss of lives in air travel. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you remember... It scares air travel. Oh, 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 very scary. Occasionally, there have been uh, some occasion in the world that it, it actually caused uh, air crash, but it's very rare. It's very rare. It gives you discomfort, can throw you up and down, can hurt people who are not strapped to their seat. That's why when you sit down, they say, have your safety strap on. Even when you think you are in the cruising height mm -hmm. and everything is fine, because pilots have no way of seeing visually or even in their radar that turbulence is ahead of them. Um, you're likely to quickly run into it and it throws you up and hurts you out of your seat and you hurt yourself. So anytime you're seated, my dear viewers, please have your safety strap on because cart is elusive and pi even pilots don't know when they are coming. Now, well, uh, let's move to uh, clip four, please. Clip four. Detection of clear air turbulence. Impossible to detect with the naked eyes and very difficult to detect with radar. Clear air turbulence remains elusive and extremely difficult for aircraft pilots to detect and avoid. It can, however, be remotely uh, detected with instruments that can measure turbulence with optical techniques such as uh, scintillometers, Doppler effect, and slit uh, interometers and leader. We're going to see this, all this equipment, what they're all about, and then see how uh, th they're useful in uh, remotely determining where, you know, mm. cat... Uh, will likely be. Uh, will, uh, will likely be. Mm. This is the only help that pilots really have when they are mm. informed, you know, I you know, even before they take off from point A to point B, mm. you're likely to encounter cat in such and such location. The coordinate of the area is given to the pilot. Mm. So the, 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 the pilot, if he has either uh, vertical um, uh, uh, space to, to move or laterally horizontal space, he, 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 gets, he, he gets there, takes a little detour, you know, avoid the area and uh, go back on course. Very often that's how pilots, you know, uh, avoid. But for you to see it or know that it's there through your onboard radar, almost impossible. Mm. Now, let's move but, to... But those instruments show help. Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. The, the, the definitely. 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 They, they, they give information. So here we go. Uh, scintillometer. That photograph you're looking at is, is, is a sample of, uh, you know, an average scintillometer that uh, uh, observers can use to uh, determine where cart is likely to occur in the skies. Uh, this is a, s a scientific device used to measure small fluctuations of the refractive index of air caused by variations in temperature, humidity, and pressure. Its components include an optical or radio wave transmitter and a receiver at opposite ends of an atmospheric uh, uh, propagation path. The receiver detects and evaluates the intensity fluctuations of the transmitted signal called uh, scintillation. That is the scintillometer for you. Uh, clip six, please. You are going, as you move, you, you, you see more. Now, Doppler effect. This is a very interesting one. And, 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 and uh, you, you experience this every day of your life, but you mm. do not realize it, but I'm going to mm. uh, teach you that today. Now, Doppler effect. Proposed in Prague in 1842 by an Austrian physicist. Christian Doppler. The Doppler effect, usually also known as Doppler shift, 
describes the changes in frequency or wavelength of a wave for an observer uh, moving, moving relative to its source. A typical example of Doppler effect or shift is a change in pitch heard when a vehicle sounding a horn approaches, passes, and recedes from an observer. The, that photograph you're looking at is showing you what happens uh, with, with the rays. As uh, uh, you know, I, and I'm going to explain that. Let me read through and then explain something to you, Joe. The Doppler effect can be uh, generally applied to measure speed of fluid, air, stars, and galaxies, etc. And since turbulence has to do with speeds of winds. Do you see, do you see why uh, the Doppler effect is useful in mm. determining where a car will, will occur? Mm. And since um, uh, 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 turbulence has to do with speeds of winds moving in various directions, the Doppler effect or shift can be used to determine where turbulence will, will, will occur. occur. Now, my viewers, take a good look at that photograph so that if I, if I get to explain to you something very quickly, you will understand. See, see those waves uh, from, your, from the right side of the, of the photograph. You see the gap in the waves. And then see at the point where the, the, the meet as a single circle. The, the red arrow is showing you the, the, uh, the direction of movement of the object, like a car, for instance. And then see... Uh, again, how close those waves are just before the, the, the red line. Uh, keep that in your memory as I explain. Come back to me and then I'll explain you know, something to my viewers. Joe, have you noticed that when you're standing by the side of the road and some crazy taxi driver that enjoys uh, you know, blasting his horn continuously keeps his horn as he's approaching you and then passes you by and continues? How do you hear the horn? You first of all hear bah! until it fades away completely. Yeah, yeah. That is Doppler effect. Mm -hmm. What's happening is, as it's approaching you, the uh, the wave of the sound, you know, coming in waves, take uh, a little time to reach you. And at, as they reach you, uh, at that time it's taking a little time to reach you from a distance, the, the, those waves are in you know, large gaps, all right? And as they approach, the time of reaching you, the, the sound wave, is shorter, and the waves begin to you know, come together. That's when you notice that as, as the car is approaching you, the sound is higher. It's increasing. Uh, increasing. It's increasing. And then and there then is this sweeping one as it crosses your standing position. Ah, and then uh, there again is going is receding and going away from you, and the wave is expanding once again. And the time of reaching you is increasing and increasing and increasing until the wave stops reaching you and you stop hearing the sound of that horn. Yeah, the, but, but the horn may still be on where the car is, but you stop hearing it because the wave doesn't get to you anymore. But that but, is Doppler effect. Yeah, but that effect too, I think it, it, can, it, it is also applicable in uh, some vehicles that are moving in high speed. You what? can be hearing, the, as in a, a car that is moving on a very high speed, you can be hearing the sound of the car coming. Yeah, know, if it has huge and then, engine yes. and, and high sound, yes. or bad exhaust, or, 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 or bad or, or exhaust. Or even these power bikes. Anything that yes. is sound. Can Anything that is sound. Mm. Anything that is sound. Mm. If that, so, that um, is dope life. Eh? Yes. That, uh, hearing it at high, and it's sweeping, and, and receding, and fading away. That is the play effect for you. Now, let's move to the seven quickly, because this time is usually not our friend. N-split interferometer. Used for generation and measurement of complex interference patterns. The N-slit interferometer is an extension of the double-slit interferometer. Don't worry yourself about this uh, N-slit and double. Just understand that the fact that these are some of the equipment used to uh, measure, measure and yes, and detect where cat may occur. Mm. 
you know, f uh, f so that pilots can fly us uh, safely, safely and nicely and comfortably mm. in the skies. Mm. All right? So, uh, known I, as I, Young's double slit interferometers. End slit interferometers using large intra interferometric distances have been found to be effective detectors of clear air turbulence. Clip 8, please. Uh, leader, that's another very interesting and exciting equipment. Mm. Leader, a portmanteau of light and radar. I mean, you understand the meaning of portmanteau, you know, when you combine two, two names to form a single name, mm. all right? So, uh, light and radar, you know, uh, were put together to develop leader, okay? So, uh, we say a portmanteau of light and radar. <coughs> LIDAR is a surveying method that measures distance to a target by illuminating that target with a pulsed laser light and measuring the reflective pulses with a sensor. Differences in laser return times and wavelengths uh, can then be used to develop 3D images of that target, popularly used uh, to make high resolution maps with uh, applications in numerous scientific fields. LIDAR is sometimes called scanning and 3D scanning with terrestrial, airborne, and mobile applications. LIDAR uses ultraviolet, visible, or near-infrared light to image objects it can target. Uh, uh, rather, objects. It can target a wide range of materials, including non-metallic objects, rocks, rain, chemical uh, compounds, aerosols, clouds. It, it can, you can use LIDAR to actually target anything and get a 3D image of that mm -hmm. object. Uh, uh, single molecules as well. It is therefore useful in the detection of clear air turbulence. If you take a look at that, those photographs, Joe, you look at one on the left, LIDAR was used to measure an open desert space where you have some cameras. Can you see, can you see a line of uh, cameras you know, on that green, green photograph to your yes. left? Yes. Yes. It, it, it was just an imaging that was done with uh, LIDAR. If you look at the, uh, the middle photograph, mm -hmm. that is a road and, and roadside trees, mm -hmm. you know, targeted with a uh, LIDAR. Mm -hmm. And a, a 3D photograph of, of it was, uh, was actually, you know, uh, determined. Uh, that's a road. Well, like, it's surrounded uh, by, by mountains. Uh, no, those are trees. You know, the roadside trees and, and, and stuff. But look at the beautiful way it captured the road. You know, in 3D, you know, imaging, and that is a piece of equipment for you on the on the photograph, you know, uh, on, on your right. So that can be used also to uh, uh, shoot into the skies and uh, determine where uh, cut, 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 maybe. Cut, yes, you know, maybe occurring, and then of course the coordinates are uh, given to, to to pilots to to be careful. Mm -hmm. And maintain the and, and, and of course announce mm. that, know, when they're getting close that's to passengers correct. to that's take correct. precautions. That's correct, Joe. You know. Right. Next clip, please, quickly. Clip nine. Factors that indicate cart presence. Although detecting and uh, predicting cart is hard for meteorologists uh, due to the difficulty of measuring its occurrence are the usual heights uh, they occur. Uh, the following factors affect the likelihood of uh, cart, clear air turbulence. Number one, temperature gradient. A gradient is a, is a change of temperature over a distance in some given direction density or uh, density of gas changes with uh, change in its temperature. And where density uh, changes, cart can appear. Uh, uh, number two, uh, vertical. From ground upwards through uh, the troposphere, uh, temperature decreases. You are told about as the higher you go, mm. but at a particular point, uh, when you, when, you know, uh, it begins to increase once again. It's, mm. it's, it's quite complex what happens up there in the skies. Mm. All right. 
but uh, here, here it is. Uh, the, um, from ground upwards through the troposphere, temperature uh, decreases with height, okay? Mm -hmm. But from tropopause, that is another layer up there in the sky, uh, minimized away, okay? Upwards through the, the stratosphere, temperature increases with height. So, Joe, you see, uh, the icy section is amazing. God is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, remains there. But as you go even higher, because of the ultraviolet uh, rays from the sun, uh, you begin to have heat as you go higher. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a level, a ceiling, where you, you meet the icy uh, position. As you go higher, it, they say it's colder. But beyond a certain point, again, it becomes... It, it's amazing, isn't it? Of so course. that's what, what that's what happens out there in the in, in the skies. So uh, uh, we are saying that uh, with high these temperature variations are known as temperature gradients. Uh, mind this because we're going to see it again, so that uh, people will understand what we mean by temperature gradients. These changes in temperature, you know, with distance, okay, which can harbor cut. All right. They say that those kind of uh, temperature gradients can have uh, clear air turbulence, all right? Horizontal. Horizontal temperature gradient can occur where air velocity changes, causing density variations, thereby harboring cut. Click 10, please. 10, please. Right. Factors that indicate car presence continues. Uh, wind shear, the, the, what I usually call the pilot's greatest nightmare, is the wind shear. This is a difference in relative speed between two adjacent air masses. When excessive wind shear, uh, um, uh, when excessive rather, uh, wind shear can produce uh, vortices, which tend to cause the air to move more chaotically. Changes in air density cause changes in air viscosity, leading to inertias and accelerations which cannot be determined in advance. Mm. Can you see that, Joe? Mm. Then, mountain waves. Mountain waves are formed under uh, four conditions. When these conditions coincide with jet streams, cart can occur. The conditions include, A, presence of mountain range rather than an isolated uh, mountain. You, when you hear mountain range, it's just having them in succession that way. Mm -hmm. But if you have a single, then, then it doesn't uh, qualify for where cut is likely to occur. Mm. B. So, so, by, but, so what you mean is when you have, you know, several mountains, there's a possibility that cut may occur. That's right. right. Yeah, so those are some of the conditions. So uh, B, there must be strong uh, perpendicular wind. That's one of the conditions. Uh, then C, Wind direction must be maintained uh, with altitude. And D, there must be temperature uh, in, in, in inversion at the top of the mountain range. And that is a sample uh, photograph of, um, yeah. Okay, let's do uh, uh, 11, effects of cat on air aircraft. That is uh, clear air turbulence, what effect it has on aircraft. In the context of air flight, CART is sometimes called air pockets. When you hear air pockets, uh, as pilots speak their grammar from the cockpit, they are simply telling you that we are about to encounter turbulence. It is important to reiterate that standard airplane radars cannot detect CART. In order to avoid turbulence, therefore, airlines and pilots should be aware of factors that cause or indicate CART. This is good for pilots. I'm sure they are taught this also in aviation schools. Uh, it, it, it takes constant air density to retain stability for an aircraft in level flight. Should air density change due to temperature gradient, especially at uh, triple pass, cut can occur. Mm. As altitude of the triple pass is not constant, an aircraft flying at a constant altitude will traverse it and encounter any associated cart. You see, it, it, it changes. 12th place. 12th place. Uh, yeah, so rules for pilots, very important. Rules for pilot. A pilot that encounters cart must apply the following rules. A, the aircraft must maintain the recommended speed for turbulence. When following the jet stream, 
uh, to escape from the cart, the aircraft must change altitude, heading, or both. Three, when the cart arrives from one side of the airplane, the pilot must take a look at the thermometer to determine whether the aircraft is above or below the jet stream and then move away from the tropopause. When the cart is associated with a sharp trough, uh, the plane must go through the low pressure region instead of around it. The pilot should be kind enough to issue a pilot report, usually known as PREP, communicating position, altitude, and severity of the turbulence to one other aircraft entering the region. Those are the rules for pilots, you know, uh, in order to, to help each other with uh, turbulence. Okay. Now, uh, if you come back to us, we'll just mm, round up very quickly. Yes, uh, in, mm. in rounding up, you talked about the fact that when you have series of mountains, that you may have the presence of cat there. Uh, what can we do to, uh, uh, you know, prevent pilots from, you know, cruising around where you have mountains? Well, um, uh, they, they, they have their chart with them. As uh, an average pilot, as, as, as he moves from point A to B, has full information about the topography. Given to him by a dispatcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the dispatchers will always tell you everything you need to know and hand over the folder to you. And of course, right in the copy there, they, 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 they have their charts that tell them the topography of the ground beneath, beneath them. Mm -hmm. And they can make a choice to stay away from estuaries, you know, where, you know, beds, you know, uh, can be and then they can choose to stay away from mountain ranges where they are uh, likely to encounter uh, clear air turbulence and stuff like that. That's, that's the essence of the very tortuous training they go through you know, to become licensed uh, you know, as pilots. Okay, well, viewers, that's the much we can take. We have been discussing clear air turbulence, and of course, from what we have been able to get from the vision freak, it may really be uncomfortable certainly uh, cannot lead to, to crash. Am I? Oh, I must say cannot. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's led let, to crashes a couple of, but well, not as many of, uh, as it, uh, the probability is very low. Yeah, it so, gives you discomfort, so but the probability of, course, of a crash. This discomfort, you may not be comfortable, but let's just rule away <laughs> crash from it. Well, let's, but, let's, let's rule it out. But, but, but when shear, you pray, never to experience it is the pilot's biggest nightmare <laughs> okay so, well yeah. what do we expect next week um uh we'll we, we leave that open and um as we uh, those that are members of the forum or the uh, because uh, there are quite three different um you know areas i'm thinking of bringing uh, I haven't made up my mind, and so I don't. Okay, want to, until I, then, I, I don't want to announce until, anything until, now. Uh, until yeah. then, the discussion mm -hmm. has been with the vision freak, Mr. Gordon Ike. Thanks for coming on the right. on the program this Thank morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very we'll much. We'll take a quick break when we return the program this morning. On ITV continues.